Today's episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast is brought to you by AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. Today we are talking to Barbecue Tom. Uh, it's just me as Owen cannot make it, but don't we, we've got so much to talk about from uh, events that he's at, barbecue wars, uh, being at Sizzle Fest, and just so much great stuff and also the work he does with the Rusty Barbecue Company. But Tom can go all through all that with us. So without much further ado, here's Tom. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. Just me, of course, today. Owen can't make it, but, you know, that's good for us, really. Um, but for the listeners, uh, introduce yourself. Tell everyone who you are and what you're all about. OK, so, uh, no, thanks for having me. First of all, I've I've been a fan. Like, I do listen to a lot of the podcasts. It happens to be that a lot of people, a lot of your guests are people I kind of know, which yeah. is weird, isn't it? You know, when you hear people on, like, a medium that you speak to in everyday life. Um, so my name's... Tom Davis or Barbecue Tom UK on Instagram. Uh, I'm a fairly average 35 year old family man from Northamptonshire, and I occasionally like cooking outside. <laughs> That's kind of it, really. Like I describe myself as a bit of a you know a grilling knobhead. I don't I don't pretend to know everything. I don't pretend to be you know a fantastic chef um, like you know a lot of the people who, who we speak to a, a lot. You know like um, Dan Urban Streetery or. Um, Rob's Barbecue, who lives just up the road from me, I don't pretend to have that background. But what I do is try and cook food that I like to eat, and not cook food for you know because you see a lot of people cooking food specifically to take pictures of it, mm -hmm. um, and that's just not my that's never been my bag. You know what I mean? Like because it, a I cook food I like to eat. That's my that's my jam, right? Yeah. And secondly, I I can't afford to cook two dinners every night. <laughs> so if i if i'm cooking a burger and taking a picture of it for instagram i've got an ambition to eventually put it in my face not have it be a picture do you know what i mean yeah and not not spending 45 minutes to an hour taking photos of it so it's cold by the time you actually eventually get to eat it either that's the other side of it yeah and fair play to people to do that if that's if that's your if that's your jam and i know we're going to talk about the, the barbecue community side of things but Generally, it's a very friendly, very positive kind of corner of the internet. Yeah. Um, so if, that, if that's what you want to do, and, you, you know, we talk about different barbecues. We talk about, you know, pellet grills, charcoal grills, gas, pizza ovens. What, you know, to be honest, if, you, you know, if you're standing outside having a beer, making some food with your mates, welcome to the party. So we tend not to kind of criticize or, or judge each other. Um, so if that's what you want to do, then great go on your journey it's just not for me you no I mean? and it, it comes across on your instagram profile if people have got the chance if you're not driving pause this now and get up your instagram and have a look find find barbecue tom uk <laughs> and it's very authentic to the point as well you can see some of the barbecue wars and stuff that you've done with cork you can't do that and yeah. not be authentic frankly um <laughs> it, it was that when you started doing this and being as part of the community was that a specific choice that you made or did it just that that's just who you are and it happened naturally um i think it, it definitely was a choice that i made it definitely mm -hmm. definitely was i think that um so for me, the big trigger was the first lockdown when I was starting to, to kind of work from home. And it was a bit of an odd time for me because I started a new job mm -hmm. on the 15th of March, 2020. Wow. So it's literally that Monday when the government decided we were going to go into, into lockdown as a precaution. And it was meant to be for like six to eight weeks, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, and I, I'd, I've been at a job and I, um, I'd worked a three-month notice at my last at the place before that right so and i got there and it, you know you go into the new office shake everyone's hand get your laptop whatever you know hi tom really glad you've joined the team so happy to have you here etc etc and right now go home <laughs> and, we'll, and, and we'll see you in a bit and i literally i worked for that company for just over a year i spent four hours total in the office Jesus, that must be such a shock uh, to the system. That that in itself it must be like stress inducing, and you don't get the chance to kind of build those relationships. So it must yeah. have been a very difficult time for other reasons as well, obviously. But just getting your head around that must have been crazy. 
yeah so it was it was a it was a stressful time i again like and i say it all the time i can only speak to my experience i don't pretend to go on anyone else's journey for them you know mine is enough frankly um i'll be honest and say that retrospectively lockdown was absolutely brilliant for me and my family mm -hmm. it came at exactly the right time it, you know we were very lucky because i worked all the way through my wife was furloughed we have one daughter um you know and i was fortunate that i could have my workspace away from kind of you know homeschool chaos um you know my wife absolutely threw herself into homeschool and full credit to to lauren my wife but our daughter just came on leaps and bounds in 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 terms of her education at that point so for us it was a very positive experience but what i did feel was a lot of the social stuff that i do like you know going for a beer or um playing rugby or you know just just talking to my mates in a unstructured setting um you know we tried all these we did zoom quizzes and we had a zoom bingo night and all that kind of stuff it feels odd criticizing that because i'm talking to you over zoom <laughs> but um it's I, I just hated it i like I, I hated the structure of it mm -hmm. um so i spent a lot of time on social media and what i figured out was i wanted to kind of have a specific place to talk about barbecue and talk about cooking in in general so it started my my instagram account started off as tom cooks and the idea was that i would take or, or document what i cooked every day but then i kind of realized that i don't get excited by fish fingers chips and beans <laughs> not that i'm never going to eat that again right that's a that's a great meal right i think yeah. everybody at some point in their life should have fish fingers chips and beans for tea but it's not interesting it's not exciting it doesn't excite me um and it's not what i want to have a conversation about um so i started taking pictures of food that i cooked outside and i love barbecue talk about that in a bit my, my journey through barbecue whatever but i started taking, taking pictures of that and what i realized was that as people kind of followed you and you followed other people and you engage with people it gives you that network of people who have the same interest as you yeah like so i, I cook for my friends we have beers and we you know we watch movies or whatever and that's great and they, they enjoy the food right and they ask me about barbecue and we might talk about you know what rub i'm using or what wood i'm using you know but by hour two of me explaining about the different types of charcoal and how i like to use them and you know the different cooking techniques and, and where on the grill the food needs to be and etc 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 they're they're at the point where they're going okay dickhead shut up and feed me yeah. like whereas you know a lot like yourself i can i, I kind of phone you up and say and we could talk about you know british charcoal for three hours yeah and it's that it's that point of mutual interest where you go okay and like and now i've got mates who i speak to every week that I, I simply wouldn't have met if it wasn't for if it wasn't for having this silly little instagram page that i started during lockdown i also think it moves on nicely to something that i was going to bring up later um when we were talking but it lends nicely towards the queue together campaign that you guys are putting together yeah. and how important that is as well because lockdown was difficult for so many people for so many different reasons rightly so of course i mean it was it's traumatic experience and that's without throwing the fact that there was a deadly virus flying around and it's still out yeah. there but um it destroyed people's well-being and understanding of what we are as people what a society is but barbecue changes a lot of that because it's getting you outside it's cooking with fire there's something very primal about it but also mm when people were able to come back together it's quite a celebratory thing and so encouraging people to get outside to be talking more while also doing barbecue almost using that as a hub is a fantastic cause yeah i think there was that um it's, it's two things i say about that but i do remember christmas 2020 when it was like oh you can have six people in your garden sort of thing and, and blah blah and i really embraced that and it's it was odd it was an odd experience for me because traditionally i'm a bit of a introvert mm -hmm which a lot of people look at me odd when I say, because I can kind of, you know, I get an Instagram live or I, I can talk to you and I, you know, I go to a sizzle fest. I'm really gregarious. And I'm friendly and, and blah, blah, blah. But kind of what I mean by that is that that is me giving energy out to the world. And then to kind of get it back, I need to spend a bit of time in my own company. Um, so 
I really embraced the idea of, okay, well, if we have to be in the garden, then I'm going to build a barbecue shack and we can be dry and I can light the barbecue and it can be warm and we can still have good food and share that outside. And I think a lot of people did. And I think that's where like barbecue really came into its own kind of December 2020. Um, maybe less so December 2021, but that kind of having those communal experiences, but but outside. And you saw it in pubs and stuff as well, where you had your kind of like heated dining pods and stuff as well. But there is something really, I think there is like to you to your point, there is something really primal about being outside next to a fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is it is comforting. I think the other thing from a mental health point of view is I think everybody has their own form of cathartic meditation where you do the same things in the same way and you find comfort in that and you find calmness in that because if i do you know step a step b step c i'll get step d so this is the simplest thing simplest analogy i can use is making yourself a cup of tea so everybody likes their tea slightly differently everybody knows how they like their tea and if you're really really lucky and you've got a great relationship there is one other person in the world who knows how you like your tea right yeah but you know what you're doing you're going to go and make yourself a cup of tea you're going to you know put the milk in first if you're stupid <laughs> or you, you know you're gonna have your tea bag you know exactly how much water you know exactly how much sugar to put in and then you get something comforting in the end I, I, I think barbecue for me is that you know i go outside i light my chimney i know when the calls are ready i know how hot the barbecue is going to get um i just great isn't it it's just there's something primal about that the other thing is i think that we say cue together is you know food is the gateway to conversation that is traditionally what it is isn't it you know if you if you're going to come over and and share a meal we're sharing that experience it's much easier to kind of open up and share about your day or how things are going and if you're standing around doing something rather than you know sat on a sofa with your wife asking you to talk about your feelings traditionally if you're looking to engage with someone or something big's happened or something important needs to be discussed what's the first thing you do right we're going to go on a date let's go for a meal together and then you can sit yeah. down you can open up oh it's a birthday right we're all going to go out as a family for a meal together sit down and chat we haven't yeah. seen anyone for ages let's go out for a big family picnic and families will go out once a year together but it, it's yeah that communion of food but i i truly believe that barbecue really is the only food type if that's the best word to use that every single time that a barbecue is happening people are literally gathering to talk yeah yeah exactly right like how like how many i have childhood memories of like dad dad standing next to the grill right you know on this big old gas whatever it was and you got the chicken that, that your mum has kind of pre-cooked <laughs> <laughs> from inside do you know what i mean yeah and i know exactly what and, you and mean burn, and burn the outside it's just oh yeah it's horrible i've got ptsd but um i think that we do this queue together pub nights where we go live on instagram and we kind of, we have a few beers and we talk to each other and it's supposed to be like dropping in at the local and being able to say how are you and then you know taking the license to go Actually, you know, I've had a tough week because what, what's the what's the thing that British, particularly men, and I, you know, I don't mean to to um, belittle or, or leave out any of our, our female sisters because they go through tough times and they can be bloody good at barbecue. Mm. Um, but particularly blokes, you know, if you and me go down to the pub, how are you doing? Fine. How are you? Grand. Let's play darts or let's talk about the football or, you know, let's take the piss out of your new haircut that you quite like, whatever. But when do we actually get an honest answer of how, how are you doing? Oh, actually, I've had a tough week. I'm feeling a bit down. Like, so I think we're trying to just spread a bit of, or a bit of love and a bit of kind of, you know, community message of, you know, we stand around, we have some good food, we have some beer, and then we can feel better for the experience. It's acceptance of one another. I think it's so key. And we've got a lot of international listeners as well, which still amazes Owen and I, but it's true. <laughs> but classically, even on like an international scale, the British are known as stiff upper lip. Yeah, yeah. No emotion whatsoever. Get on with it. Push through. And it backs people into a corner that they don't even feel they can talk to each other. Mm. 
Yeah, it's just, no, it's interesting, just wrong. It? Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing how it's been bred into our psyche. But, you know, the more that we can talk, all the better. And I think what you guys are doing are amazing. I mean, you'll know from listening to other podcast episodes, we've talked about mental health so much, but to be yeah. championing it in such a way in the community is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I'm proud to be a part of it, obviously, with my fellow um, Q Together ambassador. So Russ from Rusty Barbecue Company is really the driver behind it. Myself, Dom. Cornish Carnival, who I know has spoken very openly about, about his struggles with mental health on your show. Um, uh, Dan, the Urban Street 3, and James from JL Butchers. Um, it's always nice to have a butcher as a mate, isn't it? I'm, I'm <laughs> discovering. It's like, fucking best friends. <laughs> And, and the cuts that it can give you as well are, do you know, on that point, you must have so many experiments with what you're cooking and cooking with different things. What are your favourite cheap cuts? So, so cheap stuff to cheap stuff specifically that I love mm -hmm. to eat. Top top of the list, and it's an obvious one, is wings. Mm -hmm. My God, do I love wings! And I tell you why: they're cheap, they're versatile. And they're quick. So it doesn't really matter how you cook them, what you cook them on, whether you're skewering them, whether you're putting them on a rotisserie, whether you're grilling them inside, they can be absolutely like fucking banging delicious in 20 minutes. Right. And you can put any sort of sauce, any sort of coating, any sort of, you can make them as complicated as you like with toppings and blah, blah. But you know what? Like if you've got a charcoal barbecue, you season them up really nicely, get the, get the grill really hot, cook them quickly, just plain. That's a treat for me. Like quite, quite a lot of lunch times, I'll just have wings on the grill for myself. Like, and that brings up, brightens up my work day so much, right? Mm -hmm. On the subject of chicken, I know a lot of us are, but I am very firmly a thigh man, right? Yeah. I, like breast can do one. Like I, 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 I genuinely wouldn't mind if somebody could genetically engineer a chicken to have two more thighs and no breasts. <laughs> um, so I like thighs. Again, they're cheap, they're cheerful, they can be delicious. You get some nice crispy skin or you can bone them and stuff them and they're just like a perfect little pocket to be able to roll back in and have stuffing in the middle. Um, you can chuck them up because they, they, you know, they're meatier, they stay moister. Just a nicer fat content experience. Fat content's a different level as well. It, exactly. Like fat flat is flavour. Talking about that. Pork belly. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Like <laughs> and even um oh, like I, and pork belly, I can have any way. Like you buy it in a big slab from the butcher, you can buy it in the little um slices from the supermarket. Just like but that it's like that. It's salty fat, I think is what I like. Like I that is my I've become obsessed with pork belly recently. Um, yep. We I've mentioned it on another episode, but we recently did some video shooting with Jody from AOS and we did almost like a ready, steady cook type thing where yep. people bought you a bag of food. It was no more than 10 pounds. I got pork belly. And for some reason I was like, okay, I've got pork scratchings here. I've got nuts here. Let's crush them up. Let's roll mm -hmm. the pork belly in that because it strips. And then that's, cook that down and i also had an apple which i like kind of cooked down with some soy sauce and some honey to make like a sauce oh my god that changed my life and i'd never considered something like that before and yeah like, it's so cheap i mean the amount of that type of meal that you can bang out for like four quid you can yep. feed like five people with that it's, it's insane or brisket i was with um yeah, I, was with, thing. Uh, I was with um Yes, we did that sizzle fest. So good, but like, like all these cheap. The point of because for me, my kind of entry into barbecue was was, and again, something else I want to come on and talk about. I should have mentioned at the start um, was the um, pub in the park cooking competition that me and um, Dan were supposed to enter. Yeah, and it, and I want to tell you about it because I basically want to throw Dan under the bus. But do it. <laughs> um, it'll be it'll be funny. Like, but um, my entry into barbecue was American Low and Slow. Mm -hmm. So we went to, um, it, it's not on anymore, um, but Grillstock Restaurant used to run a festival. Do you remember this? In, um, was there was one in Manchester, one in oh, Bristol. I was going to say, I thought there was one in Bristol. What Didn't that go on for a number of years as well? Yeah, it got quite yeah. big. So 2000, 2014, I went. So it's a year before. So basically one of my best mates who was on Instagram, Nen, Nen Valley Pete, he is a, 
better barbecuer than me, I think. But then most people are, so he's not special. Everyone says that about everyone else. <laughs> everyone yeah, says that. Absolutely. Everyone rates themselves so badly. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's so like, but it's funny because now, like, when Barbecue Wars got a bit of a got a bit of a following, and like, and people were under the impression that I can cook, so they started um, asking me questions about like techniques and how would I cook things. Honestly, I copy and paste the message and I forward it onto Dan Urban Streetery. <laughs> And then I genius. copy and paste, and then I copy and paste his response and send it back. <laughs> um, so, but like, so my entry, I so I went to Grillstock and we um, spent the weekend drinking beer um, and eating brisket and smoked sausage and pulled pork and talking to all the the competition barbecue teams about like chicken thighs and, and ribs. Oh, ribs and again! How great are ribs and how cheap are ribs? Mm. Like. Pork, especially belly ribs like st louis style ribs or spare ribs you might know them as yeah. they're my preference like but baby backs are great but they're a bit little yeah you don't like, get the you know, meat the proper meat content on them yeah i just like i feel like i think a lot of people's complaints with ribs are they're easy to overcook which is fair because they're, they're very thin the, the margin for success with ribs i think is quite small because you go from kind of being tough and chewy to being full off the bone very very quickly so you kind of have to you know they're an odd cook because you kind of wait around for three or four hours and then you have to act straight Instantly. away yeah it's a bit like brisket isn't it but um so anyway uh um you know we're eating that so i came home and became dived into this kind of youtube hole of barbecue but this time like the uk barbecue scene wasn't didn't really have its own personality Mm -hmm. so i know marcus was about country woodstock he was on he was on youtube there were a couple of others like dj barbecue at that point i think was um christian was working either like with jamie oliver on his the jamie oliver food tube as like the barbecue consultant or whatever whatever his title was um so i kind of dove into that and i got a weber smoky mountain the little you know the bullet smoker yeah, yeah. um and that was kind of my intro, but and, and I was loving life because I could go and buy, go to the butcher and buy a you know bone in pork shoulder for, you know, comparatively very little money, and then that would feed me and my wife, well, she, to, to the point where she would be sick of pulled pork, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I'd do ribs and she'd be sick of ribs, right? So um, like, but I think a lot of these like cheaper cuts, like the brisket and you know, particularly this has happened particularly I think in the last couple of years with steak, like. Uh, what I would call a hanger steak or an anglais steak that okay. used to be like a like a butcher's secret, right? Yeah. But now everyone knows about it, and it's the same with belly pork. It's it's twice as expensive as it used to be because everybody bloody knows about it. Well, this is what blew me away and Owen uh, at Sizzle Fest when we had that feather blade. Did you have the feather blade? Mm. Like, we were like, never heard of this cut before. What have they done to this beautiful piece of beef? Because it was it was mind blowing. I mean, part of it was the fact that. I think the situation that we were in, because everyone's in yeah. a great mood when they're there, um, and also how they paired it up in the bun. But I was like, I've never even heard of this cut. What what even is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so just, I think it's interesting as well. Having those butchers that you can talk to in that way as a friend mm. must... I mean, does he ever say to you, have you ever tried this? Go, go, go oh. cook with this and come back. 100%. Like, it, you know, he, he kind of call him up. But it, then it's nice to kind of have a butcher to be able to speak to and say hey i've got an idea to cook this what do you think mm -hmm. um or you know i i, I want to make this for this many people what are your thoughts like you know or you know i've read about this cut online can you get it how would you cook it what are the differences because you know talking about things like tri-tip or you know even steak to a certain degree a lot of the youtube channels that you watch they're based on american produce Mm, so different uh, uh, british produce is great and and fantastic quality and flavorful and you know through ethical supply chains and ethical raising and all that kind of stuff like um meat matters ollie from meat matters oh my god that have you had any of his beef i haven't it is game changing <laughs> like I, honestly if you put your you kind of so it's ex dairy cows right that he then that they then graze it so they've had a really long life the fat is i swear to god golden like you put that meat in your mouth and you kind of go this is what beef is supposed to taste like it's just 
outstanding. Um, but then, you know, the difference is in how you prepare that versus, you know, for example, an American grain fed brisket or an American grain fed tri-tip. So you have to be a bit conscious of that and having that knowledge resource in the barbecue community is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. And people are willing to share. There's not that many communities online like the barbecue yep. community where you get the odd weird rotten eggs that, that will annoy people. But I'd say 99% of the people in the barbecue community, they're willing to help. They want to talk to you about what you've done. You think you've done a yep. bad job and they'll be messaging you going, oh, my God, this looks insane. What have you done? How have you done it? And that just boosts everyone, frankly. And I think also just being able to reach out to like, I've never reached out to anyone saying, right, that looks great. I'd love to have a go at it. What's your recipe? What's your technique? Blah, blah. I've never had anyone come back and say, no, fuck you, basically. Yeah. Like everybody has been so open and because recipes are for sharing, right? That's the point. That's what it them. is. It's a, it's, that's literally it's a what a recipe is. Communal, exactly. It's a communal experience, you know. Um, I'll tell you, the, I talk about cheap cuts and things I like to cook. My new favourite thing is chicken hearts. Wow. Um, you, weren't they, did you guys put some together at Sizzle Fest, from memory? Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, on the yeah, big poles. Is that right? Yeah, on the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, on the big skewers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is a bit dangerous because you basically like then, so, I, you know, I won't lie to you and say we all had a few beers. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, um, oh God, Jesus, I nearly died that night. Anyway, um, we are uh, basically walking around a fire with quite a large sword. Yeah, with lots of people yeah, surrounding just... around as well, looking at what you're oh, doing, interested, yeah, excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was an experience. It was an experience. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, I think. Um, but uh, I, The yeah, words that you said there which interested me was, I think, because, again... I've only re really met yourself. You've had proper conversations in person with Owen, but myself yeah. and you, when we've spoken before, you've been in the middle of cooking. So I'm like, hi, yeah. you're right. Yeah, chat later. And then four or five beers later, we end up not chatting. No. Yeah, I think... But it must be quite... It looks like there's a lot of pressure, particularly when you're stood next to people like Dan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there's people surrounding around you like, oh, I need to concentrate on this. I don't have time to kind of engage until it's on. Do you enjoy it at the time, or is it afterwards? I do. No, I really do. I do. I do. I do. I think that. Um... So there's two things I'll say about that. So this year at Sizzle Fest, mm. Marcus Borden, Country Wood Smoke, turned up, uh, and he came up and to sprinted our over. And I saw it. I was there when oh, he came over. God, it's, so fucking cool. it's like it's just, <laughs> just so like, like because I, I had and I went like mental and he just kind of turned it he came as a, so marcus came as a punter this year he wasn't he wasn't scheduled to do any cooking he didn't like he wasn't paid to be there at all um he wasn't scheduled he just kind of turned up so we talked to marcus a lot about q together and, and he kind of you know he came live on instagram with us to talk about his book skewered when that came out mm -hmm. um and talk about the uk barbecue school um and his kind of challenges through because i didn't realize but it was only through covid that barbecue became his sole source of income i didn't know that so all through so like previous to that and this guy's had like you know amazon best-selling cookbooks right mm. and and is an amazing not only an amazing character not only an amazing chef but just a great guy all around but he had what you or i would describe as a proper job <laughs> right and it was only through covid where you know unfortunately his work kind of was a bit hit and miss and it was only at that point he thought right i've, I've got to back myself I've, go hard I've go got to home, do this now basically exactly like you know so uh, and obviously it's, it's working out for him and, and more power to the guy <clears throat> but um so he turned up a sizzle vest and he said oh i've got i've brought a picanha with me do you mind <laughs> if i come and do some cooking with you guys i love that just i've, I've got some meat i mean I, I came here as a punt but i've got meat what are we doing <laughs> yeah, yeah I've, got, I've brought some meat and some some oregano and, and some bone marrow and we're like <laughs> fill your boots so i was there kind of like you know finding the odd bit for him and and you know moving the steak around on the grill I was, it just dawns on me it's like me of three years ago would have paid money for this experience yeah. but people like, do I would today. look at the barbecue school do you know what i mean people like do. and i kind of sat there you know cooking with cooking with um with marcus and with dan and so do i find it stressful um no i do i love it I do. I love. I love because I love sharing food, and like I say, I, lo I like talking about food with people that want to talk about food. 
Yeah. Does that make sense? I love talking about barbecue with people that want to talk about barbecue. So it's a great thing. Like, you know, if you're somewhere like Sizzle Fest and, you know, you're working a grill and you're figuring out your steak or whatever else. But there are people there who are genuinely interested in what you're doing. Yeah, um, it's, I personally would find it stressful. Owen and I have spoken a while about doing some catering stuff because we've had a few people yeah. ask us to do things. And I've said to Owen, I will support you 100% of the way. But I know that I would find that stressful when, when I cook mm. for other people, like even friends and family. I enjoy it, but I go into a zone where I, I feel like I can't even talk to other people while I'm doing it because I don't want I want them to have the best possible experience. Because if I'm cooking mm. for you, that's the point. I want you to enjoy it. Um, and I think if it was like paying customers, particularly in an environment like Sizzle Fest, that would personally stress me out. Give me a microphone and get me on that stage, like interviewing someone fine no problem yeah. i've done it as part of different jobs in the past when i worked for a radio station but even having like three people there that i'm that were paying me to cook for them i would find that so stressful so hats off to you particularly marcus on my shoulder do you know what i mean yeah <laughs> see i'm um i i don't know my perception of that has changed so i'm, I'm exactly the same like I, I love cooking for people and like, i love having people over or, or you know or seeing people um mostly my wife's mates because i have an abrasive personality and don't kind of have very many <laughs> friends like um um my mate uh my best friend one of my best friends describes me as like having this like three-stage friendship but basically it's like you know, i meet you the first time and i'm the nicest guy and then you go through about kind of a six-month period of me being like a complete dickhead <laughs> but if you get if you get through that six months i would fucking take a bullet for you it's that thing isn't it where that also shows to people like are you gonna stick around are you gonna stick around you're gonna stick around i'm in mm. i'm a hundred percent in that's it so my perception for that has changed so i was always at the point that i like cooking for people and i would always I, i'm a show off right I, I like people thinking i'm clever i like people thinking i'm funny i like people thinking i can cook so if you know if you if you and the missus came around for dinner i wouldn't knock up bangers and mash i would yeah. knock up something that i, that I think is you're gonna sit there and go wow i'm really pleased i came and <clears throat> I, I have this i don't go out to eat very much i'm actually going out to a restaurant i'm very excited about on saturday but um we um don't go out to eat very much because a lot of restaurants that we go to kind of fall into the category of could do better at home yeah my wife's, obsessed like, with, like, my wife's obsessed with nando's and i feel more than 200 percent on that i'm like no no i'll cook and you'll enjoy it more and then she does but every time we drive past nando she goes we haven't been to nando's for like a year I was like, yeah there's a reason there's a reason for that <laughs> yeah I, I don't want the dry chicken mate i don't want the dry chicken that's why yeah <laughs> yeah i must admit what, I, so what is your right if you go to like go to because I think uh, Nando's is fast food. Can we just agree? Yeah, on yeah of course that? it is. Like, it's of course not, it is. It's not. It's this isn't a dining experience, no. right? If if it falls into the category of food, I would rather have takeaway. It's fast food. Nando's yeah. is that, right? Yeah. On the scale of kind of fast fooderies, mm -hmm. Nando's is up there for me. Like, if we agree that pizza is is probably the best food ever created by a human being, yeah. I I genuinely think any combination of carbs and cheese, I'll take like <clears throat> you can you can be as fancy with your carbonaras as you like you can give me mac and cheese you can give me iceland pizza that costs 99p i'm a happy man carbs and cheese right but nando's is up there for me i don't I think, mind it uh, for, i literally had this conversation yesterday with my wife because we drove past one and i think if you'd asked me probably even pre-pandemic just before pre-pandemic i would have said yeah i do think it's up yeah. there but i think so many places had to up their game through the pandemic mm. because people had to yeah, order yeah, yeah. from home um, mm. plus i'm a sucker for an indian anyway you know i, I absolutely love, oh, I do love indian food so much a curry so so much but i would say that it's one of one of the best of the cheaper lot of fast foods because i would say nando yeah. is on the cheaper level as well do you know what i mean See, um, I, put, I put kind of indian indian chinese pizza like thai whatever like mm. i live in rural northamptonshire those are your options um I put those in, the, in a different category of takeaway. Yeah. Because that's that's food that I'm going to order and they're going to say, oh, it's going to take 45 minutes to an hour. That's fine. No, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. 
the no. rugby's on happy days you know but um anyway so do i so i went so a good friend and friend of the show dan over street three has started up um his uh fire class and catering business so yeah. um and so if anyone is in need of so he will do a small table he'll come to your house and do you know a, so basically a, you know a sunday roast for you and your family whatever you want to do or he'll cater large events so when we figured that dan was going to kind of um do that uh, so a few of us in the barbecue community we went out and did our food hygiene certificates um so that we could go and help dan free of charge just to you know because it's, it's his passion and he's good at it and we wanted him to to succeed and we wanted to offer him that support so i did that and then dan actually threw through marcus but he got an inquiry about catering an event which was um it was going to be the night before somebody's wedding. I know exactly what this is. and I'm excited you've brought it up because I was going to bring it up and see if you were okay to talk about it. Go on. So it's going to be, um, so it's going to be um, essentially, so it's, and he said, blah, 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 it's here, it's at this date. And I said, mate, all over it, no worries. And then he said, right, the customer's Henry Slade. And it's the night before his wedding. So basically we're going to cater for henry slade and about 30 of his closest friends and family so owen is a and huge was... exodus chiefs fan and and dan, <laughs> yeah. and dan was alluding to this before and i was like just tell me the name just tell me the name of the person he's like i can't just in case we accidentally say it on the podcast when we recorded with him before but as soon as we stopped recording he told us owen almost exploded <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah we had a few a few little um comments like that but like i, I tell you what the, the first thing that came to my mind was don't fuck up yeah like because if you know if you came around to my house and i burnt dinner and said do you know what guys i'm gonna have to buy curry because i fucked it up that's fine isn't it but yeah. you know and to your point you know these people have paid and you know they're used to kind of you know eating good food and blah blah, blah whatever else um and uh, kind of, I, I I thought I would feel loads of pressure, but I really, really, really didn't. I had a fantastic time, and a lot, a lot of that was because you know Dan was there, and he's a he's a pro, and he could he could he could have done it without me. But you know, I was feeding the fire and working the grill, and you know do, doing all that kind of stuff, and just having a great time, and producing great food, um, and. It, the other thing I think is that because we're in this community and because like barbecue is our passion, right. And we put time and energy into it. We have a skewed perception of what like quote unquote normal yeah. food is. Yeah. We can be so upset with something we've put together and it'll blow people's minds. Absolutely. Yeah, blow yeah, people's like, minds. So I did, um, we had people over recently. Um, so and they were like what six adults and, a collection of children i don't know what the collective noun for children is but you know many a all gangle all of street. children <laughs> and a noise of children is what it should be you know there is that there's that very specific noise that a group of excited children make oh, it's like nails on a right? chalkboard and i associate i associate that noise you know the one i mean like with yeah. like a birthday party at a swimming pool or a soft play uh the stock children laugh they use in films at theme parks oh yeah, yeah absolutely that's just creepy like i can't hear that and not think of chucky do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. um so i did and i did a um uh a sh uh what i call a shawarma but a chicken kebab you know what i mean yeah on the barbecue on the rotisserie and some flatbreads and some salads and some you know salsa and stuff and everyone was kind of sat around going but i and i just thought look this is easy food that i can make it means i haven't got to stand over the grill i can be involved in all the conversations i can hang out with the kids you know, they can do the flatbreads and everyone will have a great time. But it was, this was low stress. I'm, I'm putting no thought into it. You're not paying to be here. And they fucking lost their tiny minds. Like, and it, you know, it, it dawned on me that this isn't how people eat at home. I think like what I would call a barbecue gateway drug in a way, which worked on my wife very well, which allowed me to barbecue so much more. And it is linked to the Nando's thing you're saying. I worked mm. out very quickly that Steph thought she loved piri piri. She didn't. Yeah. She loved grilled chicken. Yeah, yeah. 
and and knowing my wife as it is, I was like, right, I'm going to do some giros, gyros, however you want to pronounce it. So I did the marinade and stuff, skewed it up, did it right, didn't overcook it and everything, cooked a temp, bring it off, yeah, yeah. even did some um, like chips on the plancher as, as well to put in there with everything, yeah, gave yeah. it to her. And she took like two bites. And she was like, you're going to cook this again this weekend for my friends and they're coming over. And you think... That was no effort whatsoever. That's mm. just understanding the food that you're playing with. And then I tried a bit. I was like, oh, in my opinion, I, I should have probably taken that off earlier. <laughs> my wife hates that. My like, my wife hates that, and she will. Uh, she can. I'm sure she can overhear me now. But she she will say every time I eat something, my first response is to criticise what what yeah. i could have done what i could have done better or that it wasn't quite you know the consistency of that sauce isn't quite what i wanted it to be and i didn't get a proper char on the outside of that steak or you know whatever but like a bit like alluding to what you were talking about earlier like this is um like my innate britishness i find it really difficult to go do you know what that was great i've done a fantastic job there yeah like it's so hard I, to I do think... that so hard to do that <laughs> i get a lot of support from my wife with um barbecue because i've got this weird personality quirk right where i can't have a hobby and just do it casually once i'm in it i'm in it do you know what i mean i can't yeah. i can't just i can't just like you know light up some some garage charcoal every fortnight and, and cook some poundland burgers i've got to make it special if you've been looking or thinking about an outdoor kitchen, then look no further than AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Their extensive showroom is based just outside Bournemouth on the Dorset Hampshire border and as well as numerous in-store displays also features a live outdoor kitchen where they cook every week on Kamado grills, pizza ovens and all filmed and shown on YouTube. They offer a wealth of knowledge on how to transform your patio into the most incredible outdoor dining area with styles and options to suit every budget and you can guarantee they will be able to create something perfectly suited to you and your home. They stock and supply everything that you're going to need for outdoor cooking, including barbecues, Kamado ovens, pizza ovens, outdoor fridges, and every accessory that you would need to become the ultimate outdoor chef. So if you want to make yourself the envy of your friends and neighbours, get in touch with them today to arrange a consultation and take the first step in transforming your back garden into the most incredible entertainment space. Visit aoskitchens.co.uk how often um, are you cooking outside at the moment? At the moment, mm -hmm. probably twice a week. I'm say. finding this. It's so difficult at the moment. I think life is catching up with us because of what's happened over the last two years. People are exhausted and finding the time, particularly when stuff is getting back. I hate the term new normal, so I'm not going to use it. But yeah, yeah. when we're coming to this new phase of living, mm. it's become that much harder to find the time during the week. I don't. I, I think for me particularly it is where i mean lockdown was just this vacuum period where there was nothing else going on right mm -hmm. but we could do it at home so we did you know I, I, i'll be honest probably even this summer i was probably cooking you know three four times a week outside but we were just this so i i got on record as saying that september and october and october does contain my wife's birthday which is like the brief high point september and october are the shittest months of the year I hate them because my wife is a teacher and obviously my daughter is at school. Well, maybe not obviously, but she is at school. Um, so we get, you go through summer and, you know, we have this, this six, seven weeks of, you know, there's no alarm clocks. There's no you know, very few kind of organized activities for the kids. You know, I feel that the kids really do need a break from education at, th at that point. So, you know, we're doing all the fun stuff, even, you know, thrifty fun stuff like we're going to the park we're having picnics as you say like the weather is good so you know you stay off a bit later and then suddenly september rolls around my daughter is straight back into her routine and she's got you know choir after school and gymnastics before school and you know whatever else she's doing which is which is great and i encourage go and go and live your life kid but ultimately we've got to facilitate that and my wife goes back to work and she is an incredibly good incredibly passionate music teacher so she's organizing her bands and she's organizing the kids and, and, you know, liaising with all the schools she deals with. And suddenly life becomes about getting to the next thing mm -hmm. again. 
and actually the idea of kind of having to take that 10 minutes extra time to go outside like the barbecue and cook outside becomes insurmountable but every time i do it i'm so pleased i have yeah like every time so like we do barbecue wars with uh so me and jason call barbecue so during lockdown and it's important to know that me and that's jason how i discovered were... you as well by the way that's how i found out about <laughs> you as barbecue i think wars. it's how a lot of people but i think a lot of people like define my personality by the couple of hours i spend a week calling jason a twat on barbecue wars <laughs> like <laughs> And it, but it, I, and it's important to know that me and Jace weren't mates before Instagram. Mm. So I literally, he is one of the first people I connected with on when I had my, you know, I decided I was going to have a bar, an Instagram barbecue page, uh, a barbecue Instagram page rather. Um, one of the first people I connected with because, again, you know, he cooks stuff that he likes to eat and he likes a beer and he likes, you know, hanging out with his family and his friends and cooking barbecue. And that's what he's about. You know, he's not about doing it for doing it for the gram or, you know, getting endorsements and making loads of money. He's just about this is who I am. And it, it, you can say what you want about Jason. But he is 100 percent authentic. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, you, there's no you can. That's the one thing you can't say about Cork. God, you get you get 110 percent of Cork, whether you want it or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, So. But like, so we've been, you know, we've we kind of said that barbecue wars is going to try and be every fortnight or where we can get it in every 10 days or, or so. Um, but I, I, there have been a couple of nights, I'll be honest with you, and say where, you know, I finish work and it's fucking freezing or lashing down and blah, blah. And I just, I don't want to do it. You know, the idea of going outside and doing that is something that I can't bother to do. But as soon as I do it, I'm so pleased I have. Yeah. Because I get so much, I get so much out of it. Like I, I genuinely think me and Jason probably do barbecue wars and nobody watched. Um, I, I'm because... trying to encourage people at the moment. I, I I've done a, a a mini series. It's not something that I originally consciously did, but I've been doing it since. Thirty minute cooks, and when I say thirty minute cooks, I mean from lighting the chimney. Yeah, yeah. To serving. And just yep. saying that you can do it in half an hour. And if you can do it in half an hour, that's just as long as using an oven. So you can do barbecue in the winter after work. And if that just gets one person to go, I'll do it then, then then great. And you get you never right. upset with it. Never upset you with doing it. You are 100% right. So what I always say to people, and the biggest game changers for me in terms of like, because again, barbecue, it's a bit like golf, isn't it? It can be quite a kit heavy yeah hobby and i think once you kind of you know just start to scratch that itch and you go i wonder what you'd like to cook on a commando i wonder what you'd like to cook on a pellet grill i wonder what rotisserie is like and you just kind of sit there and go like and 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 that right but at its base form the two things that change the game for barbecue for me are decent charcoal mm -hmm. which i'm extremely passionate about and um a chimney starter chimney starters are mind-blowing like so we we talked a, a little bit in the past about journey into barbecue and i'll ask you about yours in a second but when i was living with my wife and i bought our first barbecue originally i went for a gas it was a weber q series the ones that you could move around everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. started with that for three four maybe five years in our old house then when we moved here particularly when we came into lockdown and owen and i were talking about barbecue we used to joke about the fact that I was cooking on an outdoor oven and he was cooking on, on a barbecue. So I was like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll get a kettle. And I didn't go for an expensive kettle. It was like a fire mountain. It was like 120 pound from Amazon jobby. Yeah. But then you move across the charcoal. And I was thinking, God, this stuff used to take eight. It used to take my dad ages to like this. I'll get myself a chimney starter, six pound game changer. Absolute uh, yeah, game changer. Like 100%. Fully lit in 10 minutes tops. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, no, hundred percent. It was a massive game changer for me, um, and I think that um, it's a huge, huge game changer for me in terms of that. But also, just the charcoal lights with no chemicals. Yeah, and it just lights, and it's totally even, right? So you, even if you're not using, so I I use charcoal baskets a lot in the um, Master Touch. Yeah. Um, but even if you're not using them, you can spread the charcoal out, and you know that 
you know, if you pile the charcoal heavier on one side, that is where it's going to be hotter. You don't have like this big chemical fire problem mm -hmm. where it's not spreading out evenly. So, and I, I always say, like, if I go outside and light a chimney starter, by the time I've come back inside and I've sorted out, like, a, maybe I've chopped an onion or I've sorted out, you know, meat and seasoned it or, you know, got it out of a marinade or, or whatever else. By that time, by the time I'm ready to use the barbecue, it's ready to be used. Mm. Right. And, the, you know, so I, I, I totally agree that it doesn't need to be. And I think that's where I've probably steered away from low and slow a bit because, do you know what? I've always said good food does not need to be complicated. Mm -hmm. And I have huge respect for, you know, any chefs or any people who do this, you know, molecular gastronomy and, you know, know that, oh, if I put, 17 grams of salt on this amount of meat that it's going to be absolutely perfect go for your life cool i don't have the intelligence or the skill yeah i i'm going to try and make food as simply as possible that tastes as good as possible um and also the other point i wanted to pick up on was there is an argument that barbecue is better in the winter because the air is denser and this might be complete bollocks but i'm sure i heard it on a podcast that like if you if the air around your grill is colder, it actually aids the kind of smoky voodoo that happens inside the grill. Does that make any sense? It does. Not only that, depending on how you're using your barbecue and how you're set up and everything, the Maillard effect works far more effectively on colder things like cold meats yeah. and stuff. Like there's a lot of arguments when people say, put your steak out and leave it to room temperature before you cook it to make sure you get a more even cook that actually that's balls. If you want decent, the best possible sear and the Maillard mm. effect to work best, take it straight out of the fridge. Some people even talk about taking it out of the freezer. I think that's extreme, mm. but you can definitely out the fridge and on, as long as you're cooking to temp and you're keeping an eye on the core temperature. If you put cold meat onto a hot grill or hot coals, mm. you'll get a far better sear. Yeah, I don't flavor. disagree. I think that I tell, I, I tell you, what, I think that's another thing that I've just realised. I don't like. You get people. But steak is like a big sticking point in our community, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where it's like you know, if you're going to cook steak for me, you know, you've got to have this cut. You've got to take it out of the fridge thirty minutes before. You have to do this technique. You have to serve it with this rub or this sauce or whatever. It's like, <sighs> fuck off. Like just, just <laughs> fuck off. Like there is no like, half I know, to. There is no I know how to. I exactly like tow your own rope. Like and if you see something online that you know, or you see something in a magazine or a cookbook, even you know, I grew up with my mum who's a fantastic cook who has a, a a library. I exaggerate not a library of cook. Like it, I think if a cookbook was released since, I'll be generous and say circa nineteen ninety one my mother owns it or has owned it <laughs> um but yeah she's got like the complete do you remember when rick stein used to do those tv shows where he'd like travel around she's yeah. got like the complete set right almost like the um, louis through weird weekends but he'd go somewhere else and do something here then do something there then do something there that sort of thing exactly like yeah. um so uh i think you know if you see something and say oh i want to try that then try that and we all have our tried and true methods. Like I, I always say to people with the barbecue, like we all have our memories of our dad's burning burgers and sausages on a barbecue, mm -hmm. right? So, but that's, I mean, that's what British barbecue was at the time, wasn't it? You know, I'm talking about kind of, you know, mid nineties. Um, My dad's thing was specifically was building them. So I never remember him knocking them down, but I swear almost every summer he'd be like, right, I'm making a new brick built barbecue. And he'd just make a nice. little, little brick built thing with little, metal slots coming out that you'd just buy random grills to put on show the different levels and stuff and off yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah. it was it, we ne he never ever cooked on a barbecue he hadn't built in my memory when i was younger it was always that See, I, I remember my dad going from like the sublime to the ridiculous <laughs> where like it, when we were at home uh he had a, a gas barbecue and would you know chicken burgers sausages standard British fare, potato salad, um, mm. you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. Chicken, of course, cooked inside first for safety, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Because um, of those terrifying adverts from Sainsbury's of the sausage that everyone remembers that scared yeah, the hell yeah, out of absolutely. everyone. Right. And, but even like last year, 
I was at a barbecue and somebody said, oh, you have to cook chicken inside first. It's like, where am I? I've cooked, I've cooked <laughs> like, I, was like, one day, it's like, I think somebody said, somebody said, oh, you know, we have to cook chicken inside first. I said to my wife, it's like, we're leaving. I'm going to scratch cock a chicken in front of them and I'm going to put it on yeah. the front of my car as we drive off. They didn't. I'll tell you the one time, I'll tell you the one time, you asked me getting nervous about cooking, right? The one time I was fucking nervous was, I used to do, so me and uh, Komodo Jim, did mm -hmm. a few lives together and our idea was to kind of like get people into barbecuing so like it, as a gateway as you say a barbecue gateway drug of like what what is possible to do in not very much time so we had this idea where we would do like a staggered cook so where i and i basically it turned out that i was going to spatchcock a chicken live on um on Instagram, I say on TV, right? It's TV in it. Right? <laughs> it's a type. As far as I'm concerned, they call it TV. TV. They call it TV, yeah, right? So, yeah. So I'm, I'm a TV personality, right? So, um, uh, I was going to spatch. So my preferred method, and we all have our method of spatch cooking, right? Mm -hmm. And I am fully aware that the more intelligent and safer way to do it is to use a decent pair of kitchen scissors and just snip down either side of the backbone, right? Mm -hmm. Logically, I know that. I don't do that when I'm at home. I use my knife because that's that's how I learned to do it. That's what I always kind of do. You know, yeah, you got a sharp knife. Why not? So, and that's it, right? So, and I was kind of there on Instagram, and I was pointing it out, and I was saying, right. So, and I never know if this is right, but you know the pointy bum of the chicken. I always call that the parson's nose. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? Right. So I, I say you just go go down either side of the parson's nose, and I was literally in my head thinking, if there is one time that you are gonna slip and slice your hand open or like screw this up in some unsavageable way this will be it which didn't After help uttering because my the hand... words of how easy how easy is this to do yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> because my because my hand was shaking so because i was just so worried about it and then the other thing was i like i had because it was on instagram and this is such a, a ridiculous problem i had my phone between me and the chicken so I was kind of watching myself through my phone. So I was just like, what, the, what has my life become? Anyway, no, it's fine. So it was, it was all good. Um, so yeah, that was... Uh, but no, I didn't... Um, I, I, had, I, I was much less nervous cooking for people than, um, than I thought I would be. Sorry, I've got off topic again. No, my dad. It's, it's so good. my my memory was... So memory of barbecues at home, mediocrity, right? Like... And, but, and that's what it is, right? But it wasn't like I've got fantastic food memories when I was younger with my mum, and um, she made these things. I remember once when she was like when she was showing off, right? She made these like champagne jellies for a dinner party. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So she had a very champagne big flute. in the nineties. Very big she had a, in the nineties. She, she had a champagne flute, and she would manage the gelatin to such a degree that it would the, this jelly would catch bubbles. Mm. So I, I you almost have like my... like the things going up, didn't you? Where you could see the bubbles in them. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it just blew my tiny mind. It's like this is this is low level witchcraft. <laughs> You're a witch, and I'm okay with that because that's fucking cool. Like so, but then so my memories of the family holidays when I was a kid was caravanning in the south of France. And so you go to the south of France, and I would just be. I was. It may surprise you to learn that I was quite a precocious little. Um, gastronome when i was a kid right <laughs> so all, all like all the seafood like you know um uh, fresh oysters and mussels and moulier you know, free or, that sort of thing over there. Mul free, yeah. yeah honestly when i was honestly when i was uh, five six seven mul free for lunch was the best day of my life mm. like um but then over there my dad would have this kind of portable gas barbecue that he took with us and he was cooking like french sausage at the time you couldn't really get anything like that over here mm -hmm. like where it was really kind of fat heavy and you know beef sausage a lot of the time or he was doing fresh fish on the barbecue and that i remember being absolutely amazing and i was like well if you can make food taste like that in a caravan why not why home? can't you do it in the comfortable four bedroom detached that we live in <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> It's uh, um, on that point. I think that leads quite well into fails because with the amount of cooking you're doing, there must be times where 
you have failed to live up to your own great expectations, as it were. But that's how we yeah. learn, right? And all of us go yeah. through those cock ups. What, what what are some of the more main ones that you remember? Okay, so I've got, I've got two that like immediately spring to mind. So <laughs> on my on my barbecue journey, when we lived in our and I kind of last house before I had the shack and all that kind of stuff. So I bought myself, similar to you, bought myself a kettle barbecue. Yeah. And um I'll tell you exactly what it was. It was a Jamie Oliver branded kettle barbecue from home base. And I think it was the sum total of 45 quid. And I remember still those. I remember those when they were big, because I almost bought one at the yeah. time. <laughs> I've still got it. I still own it. It's under a tarp. I don't think I wouldn't cook on it today, but I'm sure it probably still works. Mm. Um <laughs> so uh <laughs> it um and I was, you know, getting quite good. Um, you know, it's just me and my wife at the time, or my girlfriend at the time. Um, and I was, I was getting quite good at kind of, you know, I was doing spatchcock chickens, and I was doing pork chops, and it's, you know, I was doing to temp knots of time, mm-hmm. um, and you know, just figuring that out. And that again, that was a big game changer. Like, buy a th- food thermometer, and then yeah. you know, a month later, I've got three because why haven't I been doing this all my life? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how do how do I know when my beef's medium rare? Well, the, the numbers tell me. Yeah, it, like, it, it, it 100% is medium rare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, it's, or you've fucked it, love. I can't help you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> um, do you ever go? Do you ever go to barbecues at other people's houses with a thermometer in your pocket? I never have. But I've been tempted to, mainly because. I mean, I've done it before where um, I've had temperature bleed on a meat thermometer, thought I've cooked something and gone to serve it up and cut down the kebab, and there's like pink and i'm like oh whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's, let's, let's do this a bit more but then places where you know they're not the people aren't doing temp i'm like oh, how is i don't i don't want to be the person who's like is this okay okay you can eat this wife <laughs> i'm like mm. yeah 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 and you just kind of sat there and going do i want to be but it's, the question is and this is where you're caught in that and again it's an aside what kind of dickhead do i want to be yeah. today yeah because no, my wife has just come downstairs and given me like the weirdest look, as if <laughs> is that a choice, not bad. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. Um. So, um, sorry, and it, no, don't by mean. all means, this this is this is it's a it's an audio medium. So my my <laughs> wife is currently she's come downstairs to make my daughter's packed lunch for tomorrow during school and i have just been able to do that really arrogant husband thing of oh i've already done that love. no worries <laughs> you, you fucking you sit down um, have a glass of wine and thank me later yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um she's got a cold at the moment so she's been she's suffering bless her <laughs> anyway um so anyway so um yeah we, what kind of dickhead do i want to be today right yeah <clears throat> the um it's it either I'm the dickhead who is just silently judging you. Or I'm going to take over. Yeah. I can't be the person in the middle who, like, respectfully helps or gives advice when asked. (laughs) Like, either it's the Tom show or not my circus, not my monkeys. You can't have it both. (laughs) But yeah. Um, So barbecue fails. So the first one was when I was just getting into barbecue and, like, my wife, again, she had some friends over because you know she's a much nicer person than me um and um i said oh i'm gonna do you know whatever it was like pork belly skewers and a spatchcock chicken and blah blah and one of these people happened to be a vegetarian so and they were really nice and they said look i'll just bring some veggie sausages and we can cook them separately and i said no absolutely not don't be silly i 100 percent I'm happy to cater vegetarians, blah, blah, blah. And again, this was early in my barbecue journey. So I did like some aubergine and halloumi skewers Mm -hmm. um, and some couscous with like fire roasted pepper and tomato and all that. And again, that was delicious, right? Because I did it ahead of time. And that that was like, and all the flavors kind of soak in. And I genuinely think that couscous is one of those things that has a bad reputation. So good. I love couscous. I'll tell you the other thing. It's like, I love charring veg. I love that's a thing now. Because basically what I'm doing is burning it. Yeah. Right? Well, I watched so, one of your videos where you were doing like a salad and you've like chucked the spring onions on there, chucked the broccoli on there, just over the fire basket and just watch them get yeah. colour on them. Yeah, just uh, charring spring onions is it, probably 
my favorite thing to do. Specifically this year, I've discovered it. So if you get sour cream and just char, just char your spring onions, like until they're black, because what you're doing, A, is you're adding charred flavor to your sour cream. The other thing is you're slightly cooking the onion. Mm -hmm. So it just mellows out that. I, I'm not a huge fan of raw onion because I find it very aggressive on the mouth. Like if I eat a salad with raw spring onion in it, I can't taste anything else. I'm just eating raw onion. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I like to just, just very gently kind of soften the onion. Honestly, chop that up and put it on top of anything and you're in next level flavor. Like... I'll be honest. And I, we made that for Henry Slade and he fucking loved it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, no, that was good. Um, so anyway, so I said, no, no worries. Like absolutely do not bring any food. You're my guest. I will cater for you. Fuck me. Like if it could go wrong, it <laughs> went wrong. So I was like, I was charring, I was charring these courgettes and that, right. There's charring and there's just burning. Right. <laughs> And like, so I, I fucking, and I, like, cause I think the recipe I had at the time, I said, get them really black. So I was like, I know what really black looks like. And then I picked them up with my tongs and they just like crunched like charcoal. Yeah. And I was like, but I still thought, oh, that's exactly what I want. So I put them in the couscous, right? And like, oh, fuck it up. So then, um, and then I, I tried to stick the skewers down, but I, I didn't really understand halloumi at the time. So I was cooking them for long enough to kind of get the aubergine cooked. But then I turned it over and the, and the halloumi was either burnt or stuck to the grill yeah so oh my god it's just and it was melting everywhere it's just a fucking nightmare so having bigged it up to this this lovely girl and said i will cater for you i'm like, and everyone else is, is stood around going oh this is nice but chicken's nice pork's nice blah, blah. and this poor girl was just eating couscous with bits of fucking charcoal in it um <laughs> so and it, so i've got the two other ones are um my first ever rack of ribs which i did on the kettle barbecue with a water pan underneath mm-hmm I overcooked to such a degree that when I picked them up, the end fell off. <laughs> uh, and that's like, it's, you know, it's one of those sinking feelings. And I think, I think that's, I had a real stumble with barbecue there. Were you trying you to do when... three, two, one, or were you, was it just, uh, just yeah, left it's, them it's the, one, the one and only time that I've ever done three, two, one. Cause I, 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 I personally, I hate it. I do mm. like ribs don't take five hours. So I, I've um, I've had various degrees of success with three two one. First first three two one I did absolutely perfect, smashed it out of the park. And I think yep. it's that you're actually cooking to time with three two one. You're not cooking to temp. That's part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the following one I did was all right, and the last one I did was absolutely it was like one half of them was destroyed, the other half was salvageable, mm. and thankfully there was enough people that I could cut off the dodgy bit and serve the rest but it put me off doing ribs for a while because i was like I, i've I lost that thing, control the thing with me and ribs is because I, I i quite like a dry rib mm -hmm. i quite i i assume i quite like serving my ribs again it's preference but i i tend to serve my ribs dry people can source them themselves if they want that's that's my point um and also if i'm doing the cooking you're gonna have it how i like it yeah if you if you if you don't like it that way great tell your cook. own rope but you, you can cook. fuck off fuck off around <laughs> your own house and cook your own ribs, right? <laughs> um, so um yes and the other thing is like i just put them on the smoker or put them on the barbecue and then just cook cook till ready right mm -hmm. and that's that's what i prefer um <clears throat> so yeah just i picked them up with the tongs and the end just fucking fell off and my heart just went <clears throat> um the other fail that i had is barbecues barbecue wars related so we're trying to stick at the moment we're sticking to kind of low cost um mm -hmm. family food yeah pies and um, stuff i've seen just because, well, pies is my fail because, and it was in, um, Sue. Why is Sue's surname just completely Stoneman. jumped on my head? Stoneman. Sue yeah. Stoneman. Big fan of barbecue wars. And honestly, for a, for a lovely petite lady that Sue is, she has got a mouth like a sailor. And don't <laughs> let anyone tell you a lot. Right? So, um, so Sue Stoneman it says the challenge on barbecue wars when we were doing it every, you know we're doing it every week and we we're running out of things to cook and we said right what should we cook and she said cook pie right so we're like okay can't be that hard sue does it every week like how hard can it be <laughs> fuck me i swear it's the longest <laughs> longest barbecue wars we have ever 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 had just because like oh so we made the pastry and we did the pie and it was in and i was like okay this is an easy barbecue wars you just gotta stand here and drink beer and then eat pie cool uh it just didn't cook 
it just wouldn't the pastry would not cook and i i know now that my barbecue was nowhere near hot enough right yeah. but you know my lid thermometer was reading like 300 degrees so i figured it was kind of you know 220 250 at the grate that's what i'd set my oven to if i was cooking pastry right i mean let's let's be honest everyone sets their oven at 200 degrees regardless of what they're cooking you know it's either you're either 180 or 200 degrees so 180 choices. fan 180 fan 200 non <laughs> yeah it, that's it right so it's 180 or 200. Any other temperature marking on your oven knob is irrelevant, right? Yeah. Unless, you, unless you're trying to do something at like slow cooking. And if, if that's the case, then do it on the barbecue, right? Yeah. Um, but, um, so I thought it'd be like 220, 250 at the grate. That, that will cook a pie. I know that because I've cooked a pie before inside. Did it fuck? Like <laughs> two and a half. I think it was like, I think we ended up being on for two and a half hours. And at that point, I consumed so much beer that I had no confidence I could walk inside, let alone <laughs> carry what was quite a hot pie dish by this stage in, into the indoor oven. So, fuck, that was just a disaster. Like, it was awful. And, you know, and I, I know I had to finish it inside. It was just, like, catastrophe. Awful. That's that's the worst feeling ever. If you think I'm gonna have to finish this inside, that that is yeah. that is that is the bottom. Um, I'll tell you a fail, which I can't. I don't think I've told on here. It wasn't that long ago, actually. But I'll see if you can work out where the problem came. So, <clears throat> I was doing spatchcock chicken, went outside, and the wife was like, "Oh, I've got this on the table. Just a box of stuff. It'll give you extra height if you want." So I was like, "Cool." So put um chopping board on there. Got the scissors, cut out the backbone, one side, two side, put it down. I've got a knife just to clean stuff up and stuff and put it on the side. Take take the bone out, flip the chicken over, push down to break it out and realise that it was an empty cardboard box that my wife had left <laughs> on there. And I pushed the chicken down, the knife flew up in the air, I jumped back as it almost takes up my <sighs> toe. And I hurt my wrist because I've done it Oh my god! So I was like, "You alright?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay." Look round. No one's around me. Okay, I can get away with this. But God, did my heart jump out of my mouth yeah, yeah. when I pushed I'll down the other one. and it kept going? I'll tell you the other one was, um, you know, we do spatula chicken. So you cook it in direct and then like flip it over on the skin side to get the nice char on the, <laughs> yeah. on the skin. And it's another barbecue wars related thing. But it's like, so I was doing that and I flipped it over, and then. I think I I like I felt the need to take the piss for a minute longer than I should have done, and I flipped the chicken back over, and it's just black. Like it's just been it's been skin side down over the coals for yeah. five minutes too long. It's like ah, shit. It's one of those where you know I know exactly what I've done. I know exactly why it's happened. There's nothing that I can do to salvage yeah. this situation. What can I do? Now. What can like, I do? What can I do? Um, so yeah, no, it's a, but that's how we learn, right? That's you know, and everyone's we, we're not going to get it right every time. No, um, and it, I think that you know a lot of people are authentic about that on 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 social media and on Instagram. It's not just because I think that social media, particularly through my lifetime, has been a real force for good, and I think anything that has the power to do that much good in the world also has the power to do harm. Mm -hmm. um and it is something i'm mindful of where you know I, like a lot of people when i was at school i got a bit of a hard time yeah. i don't think it's anything out of the ordinary and it's nothing that i kind of have a chip on my shoulder about but um when i went home that stopped yeah and i think that in today's world there is a very real or there's a uh, you know a reality that a lot of people a lot of kids are living where when you go home it, it doesn't stop it carries on online we need to be able to talk about this sort of thing when it comes up as well, because it's letting other people, not just ourselves, but also our children know that if something's not right and someone's not saying something that's right, we have to talk about it and get it out yeah. there and sorted. And social media is so hard to just go, well, it's off now. I can't imagine being at school with Facebook. God. But also it's very easy to look at, I mean, if you just look at barbecue, it's very easy to look at Instagram and go, holy shit, this is how people eat. Like, you know, they're, they're cooking and eating that every day. And, you know, they've got families and they've got commitments. And I don't understand why I can't do that. And why am I so like, oh, maybe it's just me, but, but, you know, maybe that's how I look at it. But... No, I, I feel like that a lot. Um, I, I joked to Dan for Urban Streetery again that I was like, the stuff that you put out on there is so colourful and so amazing. 
it put me off cooking for a little while. Yeah. Because I was like, I can't do that. Why can't I do that? How? 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 Frankly. And it, um, it's meant to be a compliment, but he was almost like, oh, I feel sad about it. I was like, don't, because it's phenomenal what you're doing. But yeah, how yeah. people are able to produce that sort of stuff. And you think, I can't do that. But it's like, and then you sit there and go, you know, being involved in that world a little bit and talking to some some kind of some people, you kind of sit there and go, well, yeah, but four nights a week he's getting home from work and having fuck all on toast for dinner because yeah. he's got to take his daughter to brownies in, in 10 minutes. And, you know, all the stuff he's posting on Instagram is stuff that he spent a day filming a month ago. Yeah. You know, so I think for me, it's it's got to be about enjoyment. It's got to be about conversation. It's got to be about it just it, it just enjoying food, man. I just I, love I love eating. Some of that is taking the control away, which is exactly what I'm going to do right now for barbecue bingo. So it, it's a challenge and it makes things fun, of course. And we do it every single uh, issue isn't the word I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> episode? Every episode, that's the right word. And it's about. The people we speak to are all, we feel very, very skilled on the barbecue and saying to them, right, we'll set you a challenge. We've got a wheel with lots and lots of different ingredients on. We'll spin the wheel, whatever it lands on. Please do it. Tag us in. Hashtag barbecue bingo. Whenever you get the chance, if it's six months away, it's six months away. But with a slight twist this series. So when we come and pick yours, you will then take that ingredient off and add a new ingredient on here for someone else to perhaps fall into so depending on the size of the screen you're using you might be able to see a lot of the stuff on there can you read much of it yeah i'm just starting starting to read a lot do you know a lot of it is really good like it's you know paella fantastic barbecue liver maple and pecan well the maple the and pecan pastry. that is senior spice punch has put on there it's maple and pecan ice cream as either you make it or you use it as part of an ingredient to go with something on the side. I'll be honest, I don't I don't want the sweet ones. Oil, oily fish, <laughs> liver. Um I don't want the sweet pastry, that would be awful. That's the I that's the one I don't want, I'll be honest. The maple and pecan ice cream I I'll take. But um sweet pastry I don't want. Aubergine, turkey mince, this is all grey stuff. Do you know what? Who doesn't look nervous now? As soon as you started speaking about sweet stuff, I... <laughs> the whole demeanor changed. No, so... I don't want. I don't. I don't want the sweet stuff. I want any anything else. Any of the other ingredients I've seen floating around. Chocolate buttons. Who the fuck was that? You can do lots my of stuff with it. Dish. I love that one. So yeah, what, would your, no. what would my signature dish be? I assume really it'd be wings. From what we were talking about. Uh. No, my signature dish would be my steak sandwich, hundred percent. Oh, the one you were showing off at Sizzle Fest was beautiful. Yeah, way. yeah, absolutely when, um, gorgeous. So that was that was more or less it. Yeah. So, I, and I'll tell you a story about that once we've done barbecue bingo because I want to chuck down into the bus. But um, yeah, that's, <laughs> I, I, if I had if I had to have a signature dish, it would be steak sandwich, hundred percent. Let's see where it lands on, shall we? Let's give this a spin. Yeah. Oh, here we go. It's going to be. Chocolate buttons, isn't it? It's not. Oh, turkey mince is so close to my signature dish as well. Turkey mince, I'll take that all day long. I know exactly, exactly what I'm going to make. It's up to you. You can talk us through it, or you can keep it a surprise. So, well, the, I'll tell you what my mind goes to mm -hmm. is, I mean, it's something I've made before, which is, um, so like, I'm a massive fan of a club sandwich. Yeah. So um, I tried to do a burger that kind of represented that. So I mean, I the, did, the um... Big Mac is kind of like a club sandwich, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's got so a bit in the middle. Do you, know club, do you know what club language stands for? What? A club stands for. The club sandwich. Do you know what it, do you know no. what it stands for? No. It's, it's chicken and lettuce under bacon. See, I didn't know that. I always assumed the club sandwich meant the Welsh part of me, perhaps. <sighs> Slice of bread, something piece of bread something top no so you chicken, had like chicken a, you had the separate bit because normally a club sandwich comes as like a three rather than a yeah so it's chicken lettuce under bacon is what club stands for to be fair who knows what's in the big mac right <laughs> well I, i'll be honest yeah fuck that. so no um so i did um so i did a turkey mince burger I did a turkey mince juicy lucy so i had cheese mozzarella cheese inside the turkey mince burger mm -hmm. i then wrapped the burger in streaky bacon 
I smoked those and then um, finished them off direct on the coals. So just to crisp up the bacon and then served that in a bun with um, dirty onion, mayo and avocado. Sounds so good. That was great. Um, but yeah, turkey meat is great. It's good for you. It's quite low fat content a lot of the time though. So you've got to be really careful with like... It's so about being careful. Like... My, my dad won't yeah. touch it because he once overcooked it and he was like, it was so dry. I, just, I don't see It the will point. be dry. So that's the thing. But then do you do something like... Um, actually, I really like like baked eggs or something like that with it. But again, because it's a, like it's like chicken, isn't it? It's a really open book in terms of flavour. So you can mm-hmm. flavour it however you want. So I do things like like baked eggs where you do like a nice, almost like a meaty shatshuka. Yeah. Which is a word I can't say, by the way. Um so uh yeah um i don't know something like that there's a lot of stuff going around in my head like really heavily spiced like delicious moroccan meatballs i think it's just because we were talking they, about they couscous. carry the flavor so well like to yeah That's the other yeah thing and again well. you can add you know you can always add a bit of you know i'd be allowed i'm sure to add a bit of i almost add a bit of pork mince into that just to just to kind of get that fat content flowing through what ingredient do you think you want to add to take over from turkey mince I would like to add, please, because they are so underrated, anchovies. Ooh, what a way to improve a sauce. Or basically anything that you feel needs more of that umami flavour, like sauce, stew, piece of meat, whatever. And because they 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 dissolve into... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you don't taste fish, you just taste like umami like that that savory note at the back of the tongue that clout and i feel like a lot of people myself included will taste something and then add salt to it mm-hmm. and then taste it again and you don't really taste any difference whereas if you add something like miso or um anchovies you actually do get that Hit. increased savory note that you're looking for um like and it's been through knowing that and other chefs that i vaguely know this now um but a lot of the time when we're adding salt to things we're not we're not trying to add salt we need to add umami or we need to add an acid like lemon juice or vinegar mm-hmm. to kind of elevate those flavors but like it's little things like that that i've got out of our community which um which take um take your cooking kind of to the next the next level and it's not hard is it you know if you know that you know i'll add a dash of cider vinegar or a dash of red wine vinegar to the sauce then it's going to make it much nicer Tell us about this steak sandwich and throw Dan under right. the bus. So, uh, there was a pub in the park in Marlow last year. Um, so, um, they put out a call on social media, the Barbecue Mag, where they were doing the Barbecue Hero competition. And you had to submit, teams of two, you had to submit a picture of a cook you'd recently done. Mm-hmm. And I asked Dan, do you fancy chucking a hat in the ring? Like barbecue hero competition. And the judges were Simon Rimmer, Simon Rimmer, uh, Shropshire Lad, Adam Pennell, and Tom Kerridge. Um, and we were so like, and I know that Tom Kerridge is Dan's absolute cooking hero, as he is for a lot of us, frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, so Dan said, absolutely, let's apply. You know, we you'll never know, we might get in. So anyway. Dan sent me a picture of one of these like taco tables that he does. You know, have you seen this where, yeah. you know, oh, <clears throat> like, just how do you get blue into a food picture? That sort of thing that he does. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, so he, um, anyway, we got in shockingly. <laughs> uh, and the, so the, um, the challenge was to cook. You had, we knew we were going to get a steak. Mm-hmm. We knew we were going to get, some sort of charcoal barbecue to cook on, whether it was a Weber, a KJ, or a Kadai. Um, and then we were going to get a ciabatta, but all the other ingredients were like mystery ingredients. We had to make our ultimate steak sandwich. Mm-hmm. So we're like, and it, I'll be honest with you, at this point, I was like, well, we're going to fucking win. <laughs> we'll nail this. Like, <laughs> cause I, like, it's, because it's like, I, I'll vaguely do, I'll, I'll hang around and, you know, have a beer and, and and do some chopping and Dan can make a steak sandwich and then we'll win. Great. So, and we, you know, we have a bit of a chat about it and we come up with a bit of a game plan and what we're going to do. And we talk about it a lot and i um, really excited. Anyway, morning of Dan phones me and says, mate, I do not feel good. Like I, uh, we went out for dinner last night. 
I'm not good. One of my little lads isn't good. I'm really not in a good way. I'm going to try and see how I feel and I'll let you know at lunchtime. And I was like, ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then I was like, and they phoned me up at lunchtime. And it was like, you know, me, me and one of my sons are like, we're being admitted to hospital. There is something wrong with us. I'm not, I'm not going to make it obviously. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Obviously there are more important things. And then I was kind of, I was sitting there in my head and I was like, do I go? Do I not? Do I drop out? Blah, blah, blah. And then, um, so I phoned them and said, look, this is the crack. I'm perfectly happy. I thought this, these opportunities don't come around every every day. I'm perfectly happy to come down and have a go by myself. So I, I kind of, and they said, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll find someone to kind of, you know, come back you up. Um, fine. So I went, I went down and like, I had a lovely time and, you know, had a few beers and whatever. Um, and then it came time to cook and there was a guy from um, one of the stands who came to, came to cook with me and, and helped me out. But it was really kind of my show mm -hmm. um so we cooking on kadai fireball no idea like never cooked on one before but fire's fire right so how hard yeah. can it be um anyway so knock out this uh this steak sandwich that was vaguely like the plan that i had um figure this out and then um i win <laughs> so <laughs> um oh, so yeah, that's so gotta that, feel good that's like, gotta feel oh, good it was great it's brilliant like one of the <laughs> honestly like probably one of the one of the best days of my life um you know <laughs> you know if they but if those boys think if those boys think i can cook if they if i can knock up something that those judges think is is half decent then you know i must be must be all right you know you know last thing so i'm conscious of the time and we're coming to the end of the podcast oh, we have said throughout this uh, episode that we talk about your journey into barbecue. So before we go, yeah. let's introduce everyone to how you got into barbecue and inspire some people before we finish. Uh, so um, it's not, uh, I suppose it's the same story as a lot of people. So as I say, I went to Grillstock in 2014. I got into mm -hmm. like American low and slow barbecue. Uh, I bought my beloved little baby 37 centimeter or was bought it for a birthday present. My 30th actually. Um, so started doing, uh, you know, slow cook, slow cook shoulder of lamb, slow cook ribs, pulled pork, brisket, blah, blah. Um, I still had my Jamie Oliver grill at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, and that really ignited, like, because I, li I like cooking. I like eating. I'm, I'm a greedy so-and-so. I like having food to eat and I like, I know what, what, what good food tastes like. So um, I like cooking. I find it therapeutic. I find it meditative. It's just, you know, everyone needs a hobby. I've got five, but cooking is, is definitely one of them. Um, so I got a slightly bigger grill then at that point. I got my big Outback full barrel barbecue because mm -hmm. um, I wanted to be able to cater to more people. I found my fantastic local artisan charcoal producers, lovely, lovely people, Hugh and Carolyn, who live in like this, chocolate box cottage which they've built in the forest <laughs> and it's it's just like it's everyone's ideal life right they are you know off grid Burning living wood. in the forest making charcoal they can't cook which is odd <laughs> so i'm slowly teaching them how to how to barbecue right they make this fantastic product in the heart of northamptonshire um anyway um so yeah so is it really it's just about my journey to barbecue is about me discovering through a community and through youtube that i love cooking over wood i love the flavor that it gives food i love the community and how positive it is um it was really came from an interest in american low and slow barbecue and the history of that and the the ritual of that um that led me to kind of the uk barbecue scene i started my instagram page in i think april 2020 something mm -hmm. of that nature um and just uh yeah i've had a great time with it i got um so i wanted to upgrade my outback i really wanted a wsm mm -hmm. oh well master sorry not a wsm um and uh one of the guys in our community rob's barbecue who lives down the road from me actually he heard me on barbecue was talking about how it was my birthday coming up and i really wanted this Wilma master such and he actually phoned me and said i've just won a new master such on a competition so do you want my old one and i was like yeah 
great thank you very much that's really generous but like and this is a guy who i met through instagram who lives if we're being generous three and a half miles down the road from me wow um so yeah and november i think november 2020 we built my barbecue shack which was literally driven by a wish to not be wet when i was doing barbecue wars <laughs> i'm just tired of being rained on um so yeah my journey i, I you know I don't really describe it as a journey into barbecue. It's more of a journey through barbecue because we're all on that journey. Um, it's really driven by meeting great people like yourself and, you know, trying to bring some, some positivity to, to social media. So anyone out there who's listening to this, watching stuff on YouTube, thinking I want to give it a go or maybe do it on the side and say, like, oh, maybe I can get into this a bit more. Give it two years. You could be winning a steak sandwich <laughs> competition. <laughs> With Simon Rimmer, yeah, yeah. Tom Kerry, Tom Kerry, yeah. you know, um, but you know, it's fantastic talking to you. I know that I'm going to be talking to you again very shortly as well about other bits and pieces, but thank yeah, you so yeah, much yeah. for the time as well. And one more time, how can people find you? Uh, so I literally barbecue Tom UK on Instagram. I, I'm not involved in YouTube or Facebook or whatever else, but just cause it, you know, I, I don't know how to, and that's the time. It's a uh, lot of fun. You know, the amount of editing that goes into this. Oh, <laughs> mate, honestly, more more power to you. Jesus, I don't know. I don't know where you find the energy. So yeah, and um, like I mean, like you just said, if anyone's looking at anything that we're cooking or anything we're doing on Instagram, just reach out. Any of the bigger accounts, you know, you get lies like Country Wood Smoke, Marcus Borden, or um, the Smoking Elk. He's now got a barbecue school. But these, are like you send the messages. Mm. You know, well, I the they will when respond. I had, they will respond. When I had one <laughs> follower saying, "Hey, that looks really good. How do you do that?" and they respond, or they call you and say, "Hey, great to meet you. Like, let's have a conversation." It's just, it's an awesome, awesome community, and I really think that the level of it's same with food, but particularly with barbecue. If you put in like five percent more thought and effort, you get fifty percent more result back. Yeah. Um, you know, go get out there, buy a chimney starter, get some decent charcoal, have a go. That's all I do. I've just, just honestly, just a knobhead with a grill. I've got like 2% knowledge and, you know, 95% enthusiasm. And the rest of it's just beer. Well, knobhead with a grill. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. It's great as always. And I'll see you very soon. Thanks so much, man. Thanks, mate. Thank you for having me. Cheers, man. See you soon. Bye. Bye. All good, man. <laughs> cool. All good? Yeah. Have a good one, and um, we're chatting to you again next week, aren't we? <laughs> I think so. I'm, honestly, man, my diary is so fucking full. That, <laughs> like, it's just that, and it's like... The, the... And that's the end of another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. A huge thank you to Barbecue Tom for speaking to us today. Um, some fantastic tips there, and also some great fruit. Just go across, search for him on Instagram, and you'll see some fantastic stuff and some great inspiration. So if you want to learn more about us, you can Google us, Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. You'll find our Instagram pages. You'll find us on YouTube, TikTok. You'll also find our website where you can ask us questions and things. We also have a shop with various... Uh, affiliates that we're working with and also a buy us a coffee and any money that is donated to us we will put back into making these fantastic episodes for you and we would love to hear from you so please do write to us as well we also have some great merchandise there to have a look at too um and until next time keep on grilling Today's episode is brought to you by AOS Kitchens, the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists.